Han and Kaylin for Double Talk here at the Metropolitan Pavilion here in New York City. Today we're celebrating our furry friends at PetCon. He's so big on Instagram now. What made you decide to make his account in the first place? Well, that's a funny question because I actually didn't want an account. I didn't want to have an Instagram or a Facebook or Twitter. Um, so I made it about Tuna because I just thought, you know, he's a he's unconventional looking, he has funny teeth, and I just thought he'd be a big hit. People are waiting to hear from him. Is it, is it difficult now that it's like this whole thing, really, in a way that you have to keep up? And he's yeah. some pretty big celebrity followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. She follows like 50 people. Yeah. <laughs> did you meet her? Like, how did that yeah. happen? Actually, I was in New York in 2016, and um, a follower of Tuna did like a post and tagged Tuna and said, like, Lady Gaga's following Tuna, and that's how I found out. So she's been following him for like about three years. That's hilarious. Thank you. She can't resist the underbite. I know. I, I, so, <laughs> and so overbite. I go and check, I'm like, is she still following him? She is. So. <laughs> but back to your question. Yeah, like it's so interesting because um, I didn't have an agenda to garner this following or make this a business, but it's kind of become this. So I love people so much, and it's a really great platform to be able to connect to people globally. So I'm really excited that we get to do that. When I got to know, I didn't know about adoption or fostering. I didn't know it was an option at all. And so as the platform started building, I was getting connected to more rescue groups and shelters. And I realized like if I was uninformed, then it's a good way to educate people about why it's an important thing to adopt. And so that's what I like to do on my platform is just like tell people, hey, go adopt. I'm not a rescuer. I don't know anything about how you do that. But I adopted Tuna and I want other people to know about it. get many people coming into your salon requesting hairstyles like this? Yes, I do. I get a lot. Is this, you're going to do the interview? I get a lot of people who request creative color. I do a lot of um, regular grooming, but my specialty is in color. Do they switch up their hairstyles often, or is this their signature looks? Um, Zeus has uh, switched often, but the giraffe really suits him and his personality, so it's it kind of stays with them. What made you decide to make an account for your dog? Well, it all happened because he got attacked by two dogs, and then I needed like advice or you know just to let them You got attacked? We both did oh, wow. by two dogs when we were walking down our apartment, and then um, I got attacked here and I almost lost his life. But then um, he eventually made it, and my ex-husband at that time he was a surfer. And so he took out Jojo to do more rehab in the water. Mm -hmm. And we saw some dogs surfing there. And we tried out on Jojo and he balanced right away. And that's how he became Instagram a celebrity. I think it's because of natural talent because I never knew how to swim or surf. But with him, you know, doing it, I've learned to swim. And now I'm like surfing a little bit. And we also do it for um, charity. To, um, we do competitions and to help out our friends for friends in need. Because he's deaf and blind, how does he know when you call him or how does he know when you enter a room? Because he does. I've seen videos of him get so excited when his daddy gets he home. His daddy. He uses his nose for pretty much everything. So when he's in a room, he could be wrapped in a blanket on my lap. Warren walks in the room, he knows. And he picks his head up and he is deaf and blind. He does not hear or see him. So he uses his nose, I think, primarily. So if he's across the room, I have to go get him. But if he's close enough, I blow to him, my bad breath, and he knows, and he looks, and, he, and he'll come over. What would you say to somebody who has reservations about adopting a special needs dog? I would say, first of all, I, I encourage people to, but they need to be realistic whether they're able to really handle the extra work that it's going to take. Because sometimes, you know, it, it's just not for you. But if you're ready and up to it, there's nothing like it.